Thank you so much uh, for an inspiring event, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. And I must say, having watched this previous TED presentation, my heart is racing. I teach these subjects at the University of Iceland, and to see it depicted so fantastically uh, is indescribable. And, of course, I will now get hold of that guy and find out how we can get permission to use this in our teaching, because uh, imaging like this is so powerful, I'm sure you agree with me. Trying to conjure it from your mind, what these processes must look like when you only read the text, or, or you see a 2D picture, instead of seeing it actually on the move, it's like, it's like moving to a new age. I had just admired the um, fantastic, what shall I say, decorations that accompany Björk's biophilia, which to a natural scientist like myself are a wonder to watch. Fantastic. Now this is of the same genre, except that I guess that these are easier for a teacher to use because you will be able to relate exactly to each of these pictures. So here I am talking about something that I wasn't supposed to talk about at all, but I'm so inspired by what we just watched. I mentioned that I teach at the university. I'm a physiologist by training and I teach in the health sciences. But I'm here to talk to you in a totally different capacity. Um, a group of seven people were asked uh, in the beginning of June 2010 to help prepare a revision of the Icelandic constitution. And uh, I chaired that committee of seven people, and I would like to talk a little bit about this unique experiment of revising a country's constitution by bringing in the general public. To my knowledge, this hasn't been tried elsewhere. Um, in the wake of the, of the economic crash in 2008, there was a very loud outcry in Iceland for reform. And people asked for the reform to go to the core all the way down or up to our fundamental law, the constitution of the country. That is to say, the frame within which our society is supposed to function. The ultimate law that we go back to. The ultimate frame that no law must violate. So why did we need to uh, revise the constitution. Where does our, our constitution come from? Well, Iceland was, as many of you, especially the Icelanders, I hope, uh, will have learned, um, Iceland was populated in the 9th century, so it's a relatively young nation as well as being a, a young country. But uh, we lived as a fairly um, anarchistic group of islanders for the first centuries, uh, but, but independent in our way, until we came under the first Norwegian, later Danish king in 1262. And there we stayed with a foreign, I think I can safely say, uh, royalty governing over the country until um, the 20th century. In 1874, the Danish king presented the Icelanders with a constitution pertaining to matters that especially had to do with Iceland. And um, he's there, uh, Christian IX, handing over the constitution. Now, a little kid that went downtown with his grandfather looking at the statues in, in the center of Reykjavik, and the granddad asked, 
afterwards when they were having ice cream somewhere, which of the uh, statues did you like the best? And the little guy said, I like the guy with the remote control best. <laughs> and I think it's quite a good uh, um, analogy. Anyway, in 1944, Iceland declared its independence, still during the war, and became an, an, a sovereign republic. And there we have the first president of the country signing some sort of a contract, I guess. It's not quite the first constitution. But then, in 1944, we revised the constitution, and the main revision uh, entailed changing the head of state from king to president and then a few other issues, but basically there were minor changes. And everybody agreed at the time that this was just preliminary and a, a, a thorough revision, indeed a new constitution, was needed. And the first committee appointed immediately by the young parliament was uh, to revised the constitution, and they thought it would take two years. They thought they would be ready in 1946. Ta-da! From 1944 till 2010, there was continuously a committee, a parliamentary committee working on the issue. And they managed to revise certain chapters, basically to do with the electoral system and the constituencies, and then a new chapter on human rights was introduced in 1997. But they never really managed to make these major changes. They never wrote the Icelandic constitution by the Icelanders. And people began to wonder, maybe it's not the parliament that should do it. Even though the constitution says that in order to change it, you need to have the approval of the parliament not only once but twice. The first parliament approves, then a new election must be held, and the second parliament must approve it, approve of the changes as well. All right, so we'll stick to that, but perhaps they don't have to come up with the ideas. And one of the problems of the parliament actually revising the constitution is that they will be sawing the branch they're sitting on. If they, for instance, decide to cut the numbers of, of members of parliament by half, well, half of them will lose the jobs. They don't like that. So, I mean, there are issues that are perhaps better thought over by somebody else. And that is, I think, at the core of the ideas that were used in 2010. So, the, the, the parliament and the government decided, let's try to bring the public in into this revision. And how can we do that? How can we involve the public? And they did so by two main ideas. One was to have a national assembly, and another one was to have a constitutional council. And this is what I want to tell you about briefly. Um, this, this committee of seven that I uh, chaired, uh, one of our tasks was to plan and host a national assembly of a thousand members of the general public. And these people were to be randomly selected from the National Registry. Uh, they should be representative uh, with regards to age, from the age of 18 and up. The oldest one was 94. And gender and location, meaning that we had to take care um, that, that um, areas outside of the urban area surrounding Reykjavik would also be justly represented. So there were certain statistical issues to take care of. Here you have a few pictures from the, this event, which took place on November 6th last year. Uh, 950 people attended and then some 200 were around them to make everything work out well. This was thoroughly planned. We had spent months with excellent experts planning how can we lay it out so that the people who are there will actually give us their ideas instead of us telling them what to say. And that is not as easy as it sounds, but I think with good help 
from people who had experience in this field, we actually managed to get all these 950 people to bring forth their ideas. And I must say, it was one of the most beautiful days of my life to witness these people sitting uh, at tables of 10 with other members of this nation whom they might never have met in their life. And everybody worked hard and, what shall I say, sincerely. They worked sincerely at bringing forth the best ideas they had to the good for their country. Wow! It was great. It was wonderful. And we had a team of excellent people who processed the information online all the time. They were working out what are the main ideas coming forth. And so the next day at 4 o'clock, we held a press conference and we presented the results of the work of 950 people the day before. And we used all sorts of methods to bring out the main ideas. But take care of every single one, nevertheless. And we published it on the internet, on the web, so everyone, not only the journalists, everyone had access to the, uh, to the results. Then the committee um, incorporated the ideas of the National Assembly into their um, propositions. We were supposed to propose to the Constitutional Council, which I will explain to you briefly in a, in a while, we were to present um, some ideas or to prepare their work and present the ideas of the National Assembly to them as well. And we did that in these two books there that together were some 700 pages. The Constitutional Council was a council of 25 people who were supposed to draft a bill for a new constitution. It was an open election. Everybody in the country could stand, except MPs, members of parliament, and a handful of others who could not run. 523 candidates, 2% of the people who the electorate, the people who have the right to vote. I think this, is, this probably should go into the Guinness Book of Records. And it made it a bit difficult to actually vote. The system was, was, uh, had to be thought out. Nobody, would have, nobody had thought that we would have so many candidates. But with some stumbling blocks along the way, we ended up with 25 people elected, later appointed, to this Constitutional Council. And they convened from April 6th until July 29th, and you see them here sitting and the, the uh, media and other people surrounding them. The process by which they worked was open to the public. The council meetings were open and televised. The draft proposals along the way were posted on the website excellent website, and it was open to public comments, so the public could actually uh, express their views. And some 3,600 comments came in, and 370 proposals came in. All were taken seriously, uh, discussed and drafted, and incorporated as the council saw fit. So I think that uh, we can say the bill took shape through an open discussion within this council, which the nation had elected, and in open discussion with the general public. And on July 29th, they handed over the bill to the Speaker of the Parliament, and it there awaits parliamentary processing and approval as the present constitution requires. And I think I can safely say that this is an experiment at writing a new constitution which has never been tried before. And we sincerely hope that the parliament will manage to carry the process all the way. Um, quite some work is still required, 
but these two important steps have been completed gracefully and sincerely with hard work of the members of the public. And the next speaker actually worked at the same project, and she will tell you more about how this interaction between the council and the general public was planned. Thank you.